Hey guys, so I'm still under the influence of that cold or sinus infection or whatever it is. So I still sound like I've got a clothespin on my nose. You'll have to bear with me. But today I just thought it would be kind of interesting since I've had some time with the new 22 Nissan Frontier. I thought it'd be kind of interesting to uh, kind of talk about a few or maybe several things that I've noticed about this truck that are bizarre or just kind of strange or that you don't see on other trucks. Things that just kind of make you go, hmm. So check it out. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the seats. So when they redesigned this truck, they sort of took a page out of Jeep's book because when Jeep redesigned the Wrangler, you know, the JL series that's out right now, when that Jeep came out in 2018, we noticed that they had shaved width out of the interior. Okay, so the outgoing Jeep was way too narrow. The new Jeep is 1.7 inches narrower. So why they do these things, I have no idea. But Nissan sort of did the same thing, except they really did it in the seating area. So this seat cushion is 1.5 inches narrower than the seat cushion in the outgoing model. And that's the reason why guys like me have been complaining that when we sit in this seat, you can feel your hip kind of over here on this bolster and then your left hip is sitting on this bolster. You really have to scoot your butt right in the middle of the seat to really get comfortable because otherwise you can really feel those bolsters. The seat cushion is just too narrow. Now, some of that space that they saved, they put back into the console and I like the console. I've talked about this a lot. I've really raved about that console. That's the nicest console, the most useful console that you're going to find in a midsize truck. But that console is only a half of an inch wider than the one in the outgoing model. So I don't know why they felt the need to take an inch and a half out of the seats. I really wish that they could have left some more width in that seat. Okay, so here's one that really perplexes me. Let me turn the truck on. I'm going to just try this with ignition mode only. So the way that you do the windshield washer fluid on this truck is with this stalk over here, right? So watch what happens when you pull on this to spray washer fluid on the window. All right, so, so we've got washer fluid all over the window now but it's not being cleaned off. <laughs> so, so what you have to do is you have to manually clean the washer fluid off. I mean, I just don't understand this. Like what good is it to spray washer fluid all over your window if it's not going to clean itself off? Like every other four by four I've ever been in, when you activate the washer fluid nozzles, it automatically wipes and cleans it off for you. You know, it's like the complete process. For some reason on this Nissan, you have to do both functions manually. You gotta spray the fluid and operate the wipers manually to clean the windshield. Is it a huge deal? No, it's just one of those things that makes you scratch your head. Speaking of weird functions, on this side you have your headlights, right? Well, this truck has a feature called automatic high beam assist. So when you turn on the high beams, you can see this little green indicator here. It has, if I can zoom in here a little bit, might not be able to tell, but it's got a letter A in there for automatic. So that's when you know that it's on automatic mode. And what it'll do is if it senses headlights coming down the road towards you, the truck will automatically flip down to low beam. And then when the traffic has passed, it automatically turns your high beams back on. Cool feature, right? And it does work pretty well. but the thing is, there's no way to turn this feature off. I've been through the menus here. I mean, you can go through and you can look at like your driver assistance menu and there's nowhere to turn that off. You can go back out and go over to your uh, driving aids and there's nowhere to turn it off. You can't turn this feature off. It doesn't give you that option. So I guess you can like turn your automatic headlights off and like operate them manually which sort of defeats the purpose. I like leaving the automatic headlights on so I don't have to remember to turn the switch off when I park the truck. But that's the only way to turn this feature off. I just don't get it. 
Something else that's annoying is you cannot turn off the seat belt chime in this truck. Now out here in the rural areas, you know, we get in our trucks and drive around the fields or gravel roads, you know, whatever the case might be, we're in and out, in and out of the truck. We don't want to listen to the seat belt chime all the time. Every other four by four I've ever had has an option to turn that off. Sometimes it's even outlined in the owner's manual. So you can go in and you can turn off the seat belt chime so that it doesn't drive you crazy. You know, we're adults, we're smart enough to know to put our seat belt on when we go out on the road, but we need to have an option to turn it off for those of us who use our trucks off-road a lot. And this truck has no way to turn that off. So what I've had to basically do is resort to using one of these seat belt extenders because when I plug that in, it uh, defeats the seat belt chime. And it sucks that I have to do this, but it's just one of those things that Nissan does not give you an option for. Something else that's super wacky in this truck is the manual shift mode. Now I've played around with this a few different times. And when you put this over in the manual shift mode, you can see the gear selection on the screen here, but it does not behave the way that you would think. It's not truly a manual shift mode. The truck very much does whatever it wants to do. You can select whatever gear you want, but the truck's going to do what it wants to do. And that drives me crazy. It sort of like defeats the purpose of a manual shift mode if it's not going to let you manually shift. You know, I've driven around town and even out on the highway playing around with this. And, you know, especially on upshifts, you know, when I try to upshift to a higher gear, if the truck's not happy, it doesn't upshift. You can put it in three, four, five, six, whatever gear you want, and the truck's going to stay where it wants to. So, Yes, it has a sort of manual shift mode, but it's very deceptive in my opinion. Um, at least they did get the directions right. Plus is up, minus is down, up shift is up, down shift is down. At least they got that right. Jeep screwed that up. Um, but on the Jeep, it is manual shifting. And on this, it doesn't really seem to be manual shifting. I also think that it's really weird that there's no telescoping steering wheel. And I've talked about this before, but on the Nissan Frontier, the steering wheel will go up and down. You know, you can tilt it up and down, but you can't telescope it. There's no telescoping feature. So for men who are over six feet tall, you find yourself like here, I'm sitting in a comfortable position. Look how straight my arm is. And I'm like 6'3". You can see how straight my arm is to reach out there and get the steering wheel. Um, it would have been so nice if they would have put a telescoping feature on this thing. You know, again, it's just one of those things I don't understand. They, they went through all the trouble of redeveloping this truck, of reworking it, of updating it, revising it. Why not put some modern features in there like a telescoping steering wheel? That would have really helped driver comfort. And something else that's kind of bizarre about this truck is that there is no compass. I mean, there's no indication on the dash display or on the infotainment display or in the mirror of which direction you're driving. And again, I don't know of any other trucks or four by fours that don't have a compass. This is like a, a one-off thing for Nissan, I guess. I mean, you can go through all these menus. There's an off-road menu, auxiliary gauges, driving, fuel economy, serious radio, your driving aids. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in here, but none of them tell you which direction you're going. You've got an empty space right here, which would have been great for a compass reading, but it's not there. Uh, if you go through the infotainment system, you'll see there's nothing here. Uh, you can go through all the settings. I've been through them a hundred times. I mean, there's, there's no compass. I mean, again, is it a huge deal? No, not really, but it's just like, why? You know, when you're driving a vehicle, knowing which direction you're going is kind of important. Something else that's a little bit bizarre, FYI, if you're planning on buying one of these trucks and putting a lift kit on it, you can see that I have put aftermarket alignment bolts in the uh, lower control arm. Now, I put these in front and rear, of course, and you can see the uh, cam lobes on there, which allows you to move those around and it pushes the control arm in and out and it allows you to set your camber and your caster and basically dial in your alignment. See those? Well, from the factory, those are not there. You know, that's an aftermarket thing you have to add. If you get the rear splash guards, they're pretty much worthless. I mean, you can see that the rear end of the truck still gets crap thrown all over it. 
because these splash guards are too short. I mean, there's only like three inches there. So all of this tire down here is still throwing stuff up at the truck. These things are worthless. It's also a little bit weird that they recessed the receiver hitch up under the bumper so much. I mean, look at this. <laughs> it's way up under there. I bet you if you look at it from the side, there's probably a good two inches of recess there. And so if there's certain attachments that you want to put into your receiver hitch, the bumper being this far out from the hitch may interfere with it. So you might want to try that out. If you have something other than a hitch ball that you want to use with your hitch, you might want to take it with you and check it out at the dealership before you buy one of these trucks because I've never seen a company recess their hitch that far back up under the bumper like this. Yeah, I just think that's kind of weird. I don't think I've ever seen another truck or 4x4 come from the factory with independent front suspension and no way to align it. Uh, the bolts that are in there from the factory are just straight bolts with normal washers on them. There's no adjustment at all. I guess they figure that uh, once they get the frame and suspension and everything dialed in during the design phase, that there's no need to change it. And so they don't plan on you lifting these trucks or leveling these trucks or any of that. They plan on you keeping it 100% stock. And if you're going to keep it stock, it's no big deal. But if you're wanting to level this truck or put any kind of lift on it, you're going to have to take all of those factory straight bolts out and put the offset alignment type bolts back in so that once you get your lift on there, you can dial everything back in right and make your tires wear properly. So again, I just thought that was really weird too. Um, you know, there's a few things about this truck that are really kind of bizarre. I keep using that word, but it's the best word I can think of. It's just, you just kind of scratch your head and it's like, what were they thinking? Or maybe they weren't thinking, <laughs> you know? Um, but at the same time, there's some really good features about this truck uh, that I really like. And perhaps next video, I'll go over some of those things that are unique to the Nissan or that Nissan has done really well on this truck that make me happy. But for now, yeah, I'm just kind of scratching my head over some of these things. What do you guys think? Isn't it kind of weird? Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.